And here we go, guys. The very first question of the S1 June 2017 paper. So, what do we have here? So, it states that a closed shop manager recalls the weekly sales figures pound S and the average weekly temperature T degrees Celsius for six weeks during the summer. The sales figures were coded such that W equals S over 1000. So what this means is that for one unit of W, we should get 1000 units of S. If we had to just do some little math uh, rearranging here. Yeah? Or one unit S, you get 1 over 1000 W. So the data are summarized as follows. So you're given the usual stuff. You're given the sum of squares for W. You got the sum of WT and so on. Now, simple sum of squares regression. Find SWT and SS and STT. So SWT using just the standard formula, it will just be the sum of uh, firstly WT like they want minus uh, the sum of W times the sum of T all over the number of weeks. So over six. Easy. Now you should get. So you're just going to simply use this value here. Uh, this value here and this value here. So plug that into the calculator and just multiply them out. So it's going to be 784 minus um, 42 times 119 over 6. And I got minus 49. So this equals minus 49. Now, as for the second one, STT. So I might just do it up here actually, save some space. It's going to be similar. So it will be. The sum of t squared. Usually, you you're told to usually find each of these sum of these sum of squares or sum of variables, but here it's pretty pretty lucky. So it'd be the sum of t times the sum of t, or you can write sum of t squared over six. So again, now in this time you're going to use the sum of t squared and t again. So just these two variables. Okay, so have a go. So I usually write like this, just not to make the, the mistake of um, using the same value, same sum of t squared. It's better you just write it in parts, just like you did for previous, to avoid the error. So what do you have? So you've got 2, 4, 3, 5, minus 119 times 119 over 6. And well, I've got, I've got a mixed fraction or an improper fraction. So I'm going to use the result of 4, 4, 9 over 6. Okay, you can use the variations to that, that's fine. Right, part B. So write down the value of the sum of squares of SS and ST. Okay, this one's a bit different because you're not actually giving any data about SS or S in general. In fact, the only thing that's relevant is the coded value here. And yes, yeah, so we do need to use this one as the key idea is to just manipulate this one and use it as a substitution. So first things first, let's make S a subject here, yeah? We should get um, S equals a thousand worths of W. Now, one property of the SS is that it kind of works like a um, variance. The sum of squares means we need to find a squared multiplier for this expression. Since we know that SWW here is 50, this SS would be 50 times the square of a thousand because it's, the, it's, it's that's how it works. The sum of squares is the squared expression. So we can say instantly that means S SS would be a thousand squared times SWW. So more or less fits the pattern. And doing that, let's see, you should get, um, was it a thousand squared times uh, 50? And you should get, what was that? 50 million. Yep, so you should get a result of 50 million. Okay. And as for ST, well, this is a, a single square because it's not, there isn't two S's, it's just a single ST. We already have one of the similar variables. We have um, WT. WT is minus 49, so it's got the same position. So instead of W, we do the same idea. We know there's for a single S, it's a thousand W's. So instead of multiplying by a thousand square, because there's two of them, it'll be, it'll be one of them. So it'll just be S, ST times, uh, oops, equals, a thousand worths of SWT. So for a good mental recap, if you're using the same letter twice, then it will be a squared version. But if you're using a single letter with a known value, it will be once. So it will be power one because there's only one change in variable. And doing this should give you minus 49,000.
thousand. And that's it. All good. Now, as for the final part, the product mo product moment correlation coefficient, this is just a standard um, regression parameter. So it'll be r equals our correlation parameters would be r equals the sum that, that we're trying to figure out, so s and t, over the square root of um, the, in, the combined variable, so s s and s t t. So that's that's the idea to look at. When you say it's between s and t, throw s and t at the top and then find the combined ones underneath and square root them. Now we have everything, don't we? S t is minus forty nine thousand. Um, s s where, where is s s? God, I should yeah. So s s is fifty million. So oh, that's gonna be long to write. You can write this in standard form, actually, it might be better. And STT, we found right at the top, is 449 over 6. Okay, and then, yeah, you square root this. And then doing so, I should really calculate this in advance. You should get square root of 50 times 449 over 6. I go about minus 0 0.801, so minus 0 0.801. So you can see that the result is almost is highly is a highly negative correlation and it's almost ne almost perfectly negative. Not yet. If it reached negative one, it would have been. So we'll probably have to make a conclusion on the next parts. Okay, here we go. So part D, E, F, and G. So the manager of the closed shop believes that a linear regression model may be appropriate to describe these data. So what I did, I went ahead and just copied all the relevant pieces of information data that's required for the next four, for the next four problems. So now, part D, state, given the reason whether or not your value of the correlation coefficient, i.e. the R value we obtained here, supports this manager's belief. Well, according to the manager, he believes that a linear regression model may be appropriate to describe his data. So one thing about linear regression model, when we look at the data set itself, this value here of R is telling us that it's strongly negative. So it looks like it's almost perfectly negative. So it, this, this means that the data points around this are all fit in that line, if we had to draw it. If we drew the, this linear, the negative correlation, it will look a bit like this. And the data looks kind of like this. So this is telling me that the line is pretty much straight, it's linear, when we do the line best fit. So yes, it supports. Also the fact that if it was, for example, less than 0 0.5 or like but somewhere around zero, there would be no correlation. So technically, a line of best fit wouldn't make sense. Hence, a linear regression model wouldn't make sense either. So, stay given a reason. So we'll say yes, because R is close to minus one, and this supports method. If and you can also stay as well. If R is less than zero point five or around one, around zero, then it wouldn't make sense to draw a line of best fit, so it does not support it. Okay, E. Find the equation of the regression line of W on T. So this is very important, W on T. Give your answers in the form of W equals A plus B T. So first things first, let's figure out the value of B. W on T means we find dub, the, the sum of squares of W and T and all over the total T. That's how it usually works. Now you just plug in the values. So SWT is minus 49, STT is 449 over 6. Smash the smash of that calculator. And you should get. Um, so I got well, the three significant figures uh, minus 0 0.655. I'll keep this answer in the calculator for part A, yeah? So don't delete the answer yet. So again, so let's do part A now. Let's, let's do the value of A. Um, one way to work at A, which is very convenient, is that you could just rearrange this regression equation, make A the subject, so it would be something like W minus BT, and just stick a mean sign on both B and T, W and T. And that's it, you've done it. Now you're est officially estimating the value. So the mean of W is straightforward, it's just the sum of W, which is 42 over N, which is 6. So writing down the whole thing, it would just be 42 over 6 minus the value of B, which we already have on the side times t, which the, the mean of t, which is 119 over 6. So keep this b in your calculator, so just use the answer button, yeah? So it'll be 42 over 6 minus answer times 119 over 6. And 
Well, you get a fit, you get an answer which is pretty much close to 20, so you could even say about 20.0 to three significant figures. That's what they do in a mark scheme. Generally speaking, you could write all those digits, but it's unnecessary. And yeah, I think that's really it. So let's look at E and F. So we done E now, so this means that if I was to write the equation formally, it will be W equals um, A, which was about 20.0 plus, uh, no, minus actually, 0 0.655 T. Now F is very similar. Hence find the equation of the regression line of S on T. So S on T, so it looks a bit similar, giving your answers in the form S equals C plus DT. So the only difference here is that W is now replaced with um, S. And we can just figure this out using the relationship of the coding here. Technically, all you can really do is just make S a subject here. If you do that, you get S equals a thousand worths of W. And, well, if you just replace W with your equation, you just multiply the whole equation by a thousand. So it just literally be 20,000 minus 655 T. And that's it. That's really all you do. Okay, and lastly, part G. So using your equation in part F, so this is the S, uh, the, the S on T equation, interpret the effect of one degree Celsius increase on average. So this is when T increases by one on weekly sales during the summer. Okay, so first let's understand what this equation means. We have S equals 20,000 minus 655T. Now, just looking at this, the 20,000 appears to be constant. So we can say that there, that there are fixed weekly sales of uh, 20,000 pound. So this is the fixed weekly sales, right? And now, as for this um, equation that represents T, we can say that for every one degree Celsius, there's a decrease of 665 pound. So you can say decrease uh, so of uh, 655 pounds for every one degrees Celsius increase on average, blah, blah, blah. And that's it. I believe this summarizes the whole question. So let me know how you guys did and leave a comment if this was helpful. But yeah, otherwise, um, I shall see you guys soon. Yeah.